Hello everybody. Before moving on to today's session, I want all of you to look into this question and try to find the correct answer. You can pause the video if you want and later in this video we'll discuss about it. Hello everybody. Today's session is about leprosy. But before moving on to the actual disease, let us discuss about the bacteria which causes this disease and that is Mycobacterium leprae. The name Mycobacterium comes from mycolic acids that are present in the cell wall of this bacteria. And these bacteria are also called acid phosphobacillus because when these bacteria, when they are stained by using a method called zeal nelson staining, suppose when you take a specimen that contains the Mycobacterium leprae and we stain that specimen using zeal nelson staining which contains a chemical called carbol fusion, this chemical will stain the entire specimen into pink color and when you wash that specimen with acid then everything will be colored as blue except the bacteria only the mycobacterium will appear as pink color because they are resistant to decolorization from acids whereas others such as uh, if there were any fibrous tissues or tissue cells or any other bacteria present there then they will be decolorized with the acid only the mycobacterium will remain as pink color because they are resistant to decolorization from acids and hence the name acid phosphobacillus is given and they are also obligate intracellular organisms means they cannot multiply outside the cell okay they can multiply and reproduce on inside the cell only and one thing to remember here is that they cannot be cultured in any other culture medias because they are very slow growing organisms However, they can be inoculated into mouse foot pad and nine banded armadillos. These bacteria they prefer to grow at cool temperatures around 27 to 33 degrees Celsius, and this is one of the reasons why these bacteria mainly infect the skin and the peripheral nerves because these are the organs that are far from the body heat. This Zeal Nelson staining technique is also used for staining other mycobacteria such as tuberculosis and also for nocardia. This is a picture of Zeal Nelson staining. Here we can appreciate the pink colored mycobacteria with blue background. Leprosy which is also called Hansen's disease and it's a granulomatous inflammation and it mainly affects the skin and the superficial nerve as I just explained these bacteria prefer cool temperatures hence they are mainly seen on the skin and the superficial nerves and there are three cardinal signs of leprosy it is anesthetic or hyperanesthetic skin lesions where there is loss of sensation of the uh, skin due to involvement of the peripheral nerves thickened peripheral nerves and presence of acid fast bacillus upon skin smear and this uh, disease is mainly found in the developing countries it's not very common in countries like united states however if found then it is mainly seen in immigrants under the rude joplin classification of leprosy leprosy is classified into five types polar tuberculoid borderline tuberculoid mid borderline borderline lepromatous and polar lepromatous and as you go from top to bottom the severity of the disease increases okay so the polar tuberculoid is the mildest form of the leprosy here whereas the polar lepromatous is the most severe form of the leprosy and also the number of skin lesions is keep on increasing from top to bottom polar tuberculoid presents as a single skin lesion leprosy and this number just keeps on going up if you go from top to bottom WHO have also classified leprosy as posse bacillary and multi bacillary. Posse means small, so there are small number of bacteria in the posse bacillary and hence the number of lesions is also less. So we have one to five skin lesions in posse bacillary. Whereas in case of multi bacillary, the number of bacteria are huge, so there are more than five skin lesions. Now let's discuss about the pathogenesis of Mycobacterium leprae. So here I've drawn uh, the bacteria Mycobacterium leprae. Now this bacteria can get inside our body through many different routes. Okay, so if suppose if we inhale an infected uh, respiratory droplet, then the bacteria can get inside our body through the upper respiratory tract. Or if we 
come in direct contact with the skin lesion of an infected person then that's how the bacteria can also get inside our body so while inside the body the bacteria mycobacterium leprae is engulfed by our body macrophage as shown in red color here so this red color cell is the macrophage that will engulf the mycobacterium leprae through the process known as phagocytosis and it will engulf the bacteria the bacteria will remain inside the macrophage as phagosome and inside the cell of the macrophage there are intracellular organelles and one of them is lysosomes and it's very dangerous because it contains hydrolytic enzymes these hydrolytic enzymes are very destructive and they are also known as lysosomal enzymes now normally what happens is that whenever a macrophage engulfs a bacteria then these lysosomes fuse with the phagosome and form phagolysosome and inside the phagolysosome the bacteria comes in contact with the hydrolytic enzymes of the lysosomes and these enzymes will kill the bacteria and prevent it from multiplication okay so the cell is uh, free from infection and that's how they stop the spread of infection but uh, in case of mycobacterium leprae this uh, the scenario is a little different here because this bacteria has its own defense mechanism this bacteria will prevent the fusion of the phagosome and the lysosome so there won't be any fusion of the phagosome and the lysosome how does it do that well uh, this bacteria can inhibit certain calcium signals that are responsible for the fusion or it can also uh, inhibit the mobilization of certain proteins that are responsible for the fusion of the phagosome and the lysosome to form phagolysosome so there is no formation of phagolysosome the bacteria is safe and it can safely multiply inside the macrophage and later it can spread to other parts of the bodies as well so this macrophage now is infected so it will call for help the macrophage will produce cytokines such as interleukin 12 and this interleukin 12 will activate the t helper cells now this step right here is very important because this step determines the outcome of the disease whether the disease is going to be uh, mild or it's going to be severe or whether the host immune response is going to be strong or it's going to be weak then that's all those all are determined by this step right here okay so uh, the macrophage produces interleukin 12 that will stimulate the t helper cells but we know that there are two types of t helper cells we have th1 and th2 cells okay so depending upon which type of cell is activated the our body will react accordingly let's say well, there is activation of the th2 cells okay so when the th2 cells are activated they will produce cytokines such as interleukin 4 interleukin 5 interleukin 10 and interleukin 13 and all the cytokines they will stimulate the b cells and we know what b cells do right they will produce antibodies the b cells will produce antibodies now you might think this is good because the antibodies will now take the bacteria and they'll kill them but uh, as you can see uh, see here the bacteria are present inside the cell they are present inside the macrophages and these antibodies cannot penetrate inside the macrophages so bacteria will remain undetected and they will be safe hence the bacteria can safely multiply inside the cell and they will spread uh, they will keep on multiplying and uh, they will later on they will cause a severe form of disease which is known as the lepromatous leprosy and hence we can also conclude that the response from the th2 cell is a weak immune response now what if th1 cells are activated if th1 cells are activated they will produce cytokines such as interleukin 2 and interferon gamma these cytokines will produce uh, sorry will activate the t cytotoxic cells and as the name applies the cytotoxic cells will kill the infected cell they will destroy the infected cell along with the bacteria okay so the cytotoxic cell will kill the infected cell and the bacteria that are present inside it so that the bacteria cannot spread they cannot multiply and hence the infection is going to be mild and this form of leprosy is known as tuberculoid form of leprosy now let's move on to the clinical features of leprosy so there is hypoesthetic hypopigmented or erythematous patches so you can appreciate in this picture here, here are the erythematous patches on the skin and these uh, are hypoesthetic means there is loss of sensation due to involvement of the nerves that are supplying these parts there are thickened peripheral nerves 
Metarosis can be seen, which means loss of eyebrows and eyelashes. Lack of thalamus means inability to close eyelids completely. Several skin nodules can be seen. Saddle nose or depressed nose, as you can appreciate in this picture, the nasal breeze is depressed, and this form is known as saddle nose. And if there are multiple skin nodules and saddle nose present, then this can uh, give rise to a uh, lion like face appearance, and this is termed as leonine faces. We can also see earlobe thickening, corneal anesthesia due to involvement of cranial nerve 5, claw hand due to involvement of the nerves supplying the hands such as the uh, ulnar nerve and the median nerve, foot drop when there is damage to the common peroneal nerve. The diagnosis uh, can be done clinically uh, with the presence of hypoesthetic, hyperpigmented skin passes and thickened peripheral nerves and also when there is presence of acid fast bacillus and skin biopsy from the age of the lesion okay suppose if this is the lesion then we take the biopsy from the age of the lesion because this is the area where there are more uh, most number of bacteria okay so we take the uh, biopsy from this part of the lesion and we uh, do zeal nails and staining here and if there are presence of acid fast bacillus then the diagnosis is confirmed the treatment is a WHO recommended multidrug therapy okay and this treatment depends upon the type of leprosy whether it's possibacillary or multibacillary in case of possibacillary we give rifampicin 600 mg monthly dapson 100 mg which is daily self administered and we give this therapy for six months in case of multibacillary, it's almost same but we just add a new drug that's clofazimine okay so uh, rifampicin 600 mg and clofazimine 300 mg is given monthly whereas dapson 100 mg and clofazimine 50 mg it's given daily and this is given for a complete year in case of possibility with only single lesion if we compare this with the ridley joplin classification then uh, this is the tuberculoid tuberculoid form of the leprosy if there is possibility with, with only single lesion then uh, the infection can result with only single dose of oflozaxin 400 mg, rifampicin 600 mg and minocycline 100 mg. Now let's come back to the question. Uh, the question says a 45 year old man uh, with non pruritic non painful skin lesions. Okay, so he also had a uh, tingling and numbness of the right fingers and uh, there are uh, well circumscribed hypopigmented patches on the arms and there is thickening of the ulnar nerve and tend tenderness at the right elbow there is loss of touch and pain sensation and which of the following is most likely to confirm the diagnosis here if we look all these features these clinical features then they all suggest the diagnosis of leprosy and the diagnosis of leprosy is confirmed through skin biopsy from the age of the lesion so we take the biopsy uh, and we do uh, the gel nails and staining and if there are presence of the acid fast bacillus then the diagnosis is confirmed antiborrelia burgdorferi antibody assay is for the uh, lyme disease but the lyme disease does not present with these characteristics QS preparation of skin scrapings are done for the fungal infections which do not present as such. Nerve conduction studies, uh, if done, then uh, the nerve conduction test uh, will appear abnormal, but the definitive diagnosis for leprosy is skin biopsy. Treponemal serologic testing is for syphilis. And the syphilis do not typically present uh, with uh, nerve thickenings and hypopigmented patches. Next is the tuberculin skin test. Uh, tuberculin skin test is for the mycobacterium tuberculosis, which will rarely present as such clinical features. So with that, uh, today's session is concluded. Thank you.